Did you know that green is the most versatile color in nature? But what happens when we use the same green all over our landscape painting? The painting will look flat and boring. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you a very simple and easy way. How to mix and create different greens so that your landscape paintings will look natural, three-dimensional, with depth, and most important, beautiful. Let's get it done. We have two groups of colors, as you can see. Same blue in both, cobalt blue, but here I have ochre yellow and quinacridone magenta. Here I have cobalt blue, exactly like here, but cadmium yellow and cadmium red. This group of colors will create warm colors. This group, I will use it for faraway mountains and hills. This will be cool colors. You will see. As you can see, I have titanium white, cobalt blue, ochre yellow, quinacridon magenta, and here I have another group, which is cobalt blue, cadmium yellow, and cadmium red. This group is cool. This group is warm. You will see in few moments why I did this. Let's start. I want to start with the far away hill here, the furthest from us. This one, we will mix a very cool green. So I'm using cobalt blue because we want this hill to be part like mixing with the sky. Let's take a little bit of this yellow. When we are mixing far away hills, normally in nature, we will not be able to see yellow. So we cannot take the same green from the foreground and put it here because in nature we cannot see yellow from far away. Let's take a little bit of magenta, just a touch. A little touch of this yellow. Let's try this one. Nice, I want it to be a little bit more magenta and more blue. More white. And blue. More blue. And a little bit of ochre yellow. Let's try this now. Yes, beautiful. Let's cover this hill. Even more blue. Very nice. Now, this hill here is closer. So, let's take blue, a little bit of yellow, just a touch. We are still very far. So we want this to be cool. We want our color to be cool. So you see that I'm mixing magenta and a little bit, just a touch. I'm starting to introduce yellow but very weak very just a touch white 
this hill should be a little bit darker from the one behind. Let's see. Nice. Even a little bit darker. Touch of white. Let's try this. Very nice. Even more blue. Once again, magenta, blue, a little bit of white. And ochre yellow. Beautiful. Now we get to this one. Let's start introducing more ochre yellow because we are getting closer and a little bit of magenta. A little bit of white and blue. We are getting warmer because we are getting closer to the foreground. But still, it's still a far away hill. A little bit closer than the others, but still near the horizon. Let's see. Even a little bit more red, magenta and blue. Let's see. Beautiful. So, although all the hills are green, but it's very important to understand that at this distance, we will not be able to see green. This thing is, this fundamental is very important. You see? It's not green. Some kind of violet. Very weak violet. Disappearing. 
as if we are painting air. The colors disappear and mix with the sky. to the hill behind, add a little bit of blue here to push it further away. Nice. Now we get to this one here. We will put more ochre yellow, but you can see that I'm not touching anything here yet. We are still working on the background, on the distance. We don't want to start introducing warm colors, not yet. A little bit of magenta and more blue and white. More ochre yellow blue. Beautiful. Even more yellow. Let's see what we get now. Nice. You see, a little bit warmer than the hill behind. We build our way slowly. Of course, I'm not painting a masterpiece here. I'm just, it's just for a demonstration. And I want to keep it simple, as simple as possible. This is why I drew these simple shapes of hills, because I want to demonstrate how you can manipulate greens and build your way in any landscape painting. No matter how complicated the scene is, you will be able to achieve beautiful results. Look how simple, how easy. Beautiful. This hill is done. Now let's jump to this one. This is getting closer. Still, I don't want to touch anything here yet. Not yet. We are still behind. Far away. Let's take cobalt blue. Touch, just a touch of warmness. Beautiful. bit of blue. I want a little bit more magenta. I want to make it stronger. 
and yellow and blue. More yellow. Nice. Maybe a little bit of white. Let's try this. Beautiful. Very nice. I want it to be a little bit warmer. And brighter. I will take a, big, a bigger brush. Nice. Okay, now this one. Now I will try to make it much warmer, but still cool because it's guanacridone, it's not cadmium. And blue. And more yellow. Let's try. Nice. Beautiful. More. More yellow. Little bit of blue. And a little bit of white. Okay, this is not convincing. This hill is already pretty close to us. It's in the mid-ground. So let's start introducing cadmium yellow and a little bit of cadmium red and blue. Let's see. Wow. See, the colors now are much brighter. Let's take a little bit of white and let's try this. Much more, much better. You see, because we are closer to the foreground, so the hill looks warmer. Now we introduced cadmium yellow which is very bright very powerful
beautiful. This hill reaches here. It's the same one. Beautiful. Now this one is the next. It's closer and closer, right? So we will put more yellow and more red. A little bit of white to make it brighter. Let's see. Beautiful. Okay, next one is here. More yellow, more blue. Now we will start to see the green much stronger. But still, I'm putting red because I still want to desaturate the green. It's still a little bit far from us. Maybe I can put a little bit more. No, it's okay. Now this one. Let's put more, more blue. I want to put a little bit of medium. Just a moment. A little bit of linseed oil. More blue. More yellow. And more yellow. Let's see. No, even stronger I want it. More yellow and a little bit of red. We are getting much closer to the foreground. Nice. Let's see. Nice. Very nice.
Now this one is closer. More yellow. We want it to be stronger. Maybe a touch of red. More blue. Just making it different. Not every hill will look the same. Let's see. More blue. Beautiful. It's getting brighter and brighter because we are getting close to the foreground. Now we are in the midground where we can still see reds in nature. In nature, we always lose yellow, then we lose reds, and the last thing that our eyes see is blue and violet. Always keep warm colors like yellow and reds here in the foreground, then more reds but cooler ones, cooler reds like the Panacredon magenta and ochre yellow here and start the warm colors here, then the yellow. You can keep having yellow, but the yellow will disappear fast. Our eyes in nature will see reds and the last thing that will remain in the distance is always blues and violets. Keep it in mind when you paint landscapes. Nice. Very nice. Now, here. Let's start making things brighter and stronger. Even more. A touch of red, just a touch. Let's see this. Very nice, you see? getting brighter and stronger. Beautiful. Now this one, more yellow and blue. Stronger and stronger, you see? Now this one, this one will have more blue. And yellow, very strong. Even more blue. Very nice. Much. It's 
different than the hill behind it but still very close we don't want to exaggerate this one is done now this one will start having much more yellow and red it's getting warmer and closer to us more red And we are doing all this without even putting light and shadows on the hills. This exercise is all about color. I'm not doing anything. I'm not putting shadows here and light to make it more three-dimensional, no. This video is all about just color. How you can, by manipulating color of green, you can already create a sensation of distance, you see? Then everything that you put, like shadows and more details and light, it's just extra. It will make your painting extra fine. Very nice. Even more yellow. Very nice. Now let's make this one here much closer. Now I will get crazy. Let's take knife take yellow and blue because now I want colors to be strong so I want to use the knife to crush the paint You see how strong the color is when using a knife? But it, it gives the paint much more body and strength. Look how beautiful it looks. We are getting very close. Now I can take the brush. And make more fine lines. You see? Don't be afraid to use everything you have. Knives, brushes pastels, whatever. 
Be brave. Very nice. Let's cover this. Very nice. Now I will take more yellow. A little bit of white. And just a touch of blue. much stronger green, you see? A little bit of medium and we will cover this very fast. Now we are getting to the last two hills. I want to take more yellow. yellow, you see? Imagine that this is the grass that is almost, we can almost stand on it. We are very close. Look at the difference, you see? Every hill, the closer we get, the stronger the color is. And the last one will be almost pure yellow. Just a touch of blue and more white. We are still, this is still green. It's not yellow because it's, you see, it's it's dirty yellow, so it's green. And this will be the foreground. Even more white. 
this will help us create more distance. Separate the two hills, this one from the one behind it. Now I take the brush. That's it. Of course, I can then later put more light and more trees and shadows here, like this, for example. If I start making shadows, I can start putting darker, darker colors between the hills, like this, and creating even more distance between each hill, you see? And more light, of course. You can start making trees like this. Details as if the sun is hitting trees on the hill. But this is for a different video. Look, the distance. We started cool greens, warmer, warmer, then the yellow, then the strong yellow. Beautiful. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.